Newton's third law of motion. Newton's third law of motion states that to every action there is an equal but opposite reaction. A practical demonstration of this law can be observed when a bullet is fired from a gun. The person holding it that is holding the gun experiences the backward recoil force of the gun. This is the reaction of the force, which is equal to the repulsive force, the action acting on the bullet. According to the Newton's second law of motion, force is proportional to the rate of change of momentum. Therefore, the momentum of the bullet is equal and opposite to the momentum of the gun. That is, the mass of the gun times the required velocity of the gun is equal to the mass of the bullet times the muzzle velocity of the gun. Of the, of, the, of the gun. Hence, if m is equal to the mass of the bullet, v is the velocity of the bullet, capital letter n, big n is the mass of the gun, and big v is the velocity of the recoil of the gun, then we can see that in symbols, mv, that's big n times big v, is equal to n. Then, the velocity, big V of the recoil of the gun, is given by V, big V, is equal to mv divided by Vn. Calculations on Newton's third loss of motion. A rocket of mass 500 kilogram carrying 4,000 kilogram of fuel is to be launched vertically. The fuel is consumed at a steady rate of 50 kilograms per second. Calculate the least velocity of the exhaust gas gases if the rocket will just lift off the launching pad immediately after firing. Take G equals 10 meters per second squared. The total weight of the rocket is going to be the weight of the rocket plus the weight of the fuel. So the weight W is equal to the force exerted upwards, which is equal to the weight of the rocket, 500 kilogram, plus the mass of the rocket, 4,000 kilogram, times G. So that will be equal to 4,500 times the value of G is 10, so you put that there, so that is equal to 45,000 newtons. Now, let me illustrate with this. Now, the total weight of the rocket is that an upward force, which is equal and opposite to the downward forces of the gases expelled. So, from Newton's law of motion, we know that f is equal to m into v minus u all over t but here the initial velocity is equal to zero so therefore a force exerted is mv all over t now from here we have been given m all over t as 50 kilograms per second and we have already calculated the force to be 45,000 newtons so that will be equal to mv over t that's 50 kilogram per second times v so from here we can see that v is equal to for the 5000 divided by 50 and this zero cancels out this 5 into 45 that's 9 so therefore v is equal to 900 meters per second. Conservation of linear momentum. The principle of conservation of linear momentum states that when two or more bodies collide, their momentum remains constant provided there is no external force acting on the system.
This implies that in a closed or isolated system, here there is no external force, the total momentum after collision remains constant. The principle is true for both elastic and inelastic collisions. Now let us take a look at collision. There are two types of collision which are elastic and inelastic collision. So let's explain elastic collision. In elastic collision, the two bodies collide, separate, and then move in with different velocities. Both momentum and kinetic energy are conserved in an elastic collision. Examples of elastic collisions are the collisions between gaseous particles, that is, the molecules of a gas, or a ball which rebounds to each original height, etc. If the two colliding bodies have masses m1 and m2, and initial velocities of u1 and u2, and uh, final velocities v1 and v2, then the conservation principle can be mathematically expressed as m1 u plus m1 u1 plus m2 u2 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2. Here m1 u1 is the initial momentum of the first body, m2 u2 is the initial momentum of the second body, m1 v1 is the final momentum of the first body, and m2 v2 is the final momentum of the second body. Okay, let us look at inelastic collision. In an inelastic collision, the two bodies stick together after collision and move with the same velocity. Momentum is conserved in inelastic collision. Kinetic energy is, however, not conserved because part of the kinetic energy is converted to heat or sound energy which leads to the deformation of the bodies involved in the collision. Thus, we can rewrite the principle of conservation of momentum as M1 U1 plus M2 U2 is equal to V into M1 plus M2. Here M1 U1 as usual, is the initial momentum of the first body. M2, U2 is the initial momentum of the second body. V is the common velocity that which the bodies move together after sticking together after collision. While M1 and M2 are the masses of the first and the second bodies.